Against Steve, I'd probably let him dictate the pace the last few times that we played, and I think that, that was uh, shown to full effect um, last week with Steve winning the uh, Regal Welsh last week. I think he dictated the pace of the games against everyone he played. So uh, tonight, I don't know, um, yeah, I've not decided yet. I might go out and blast him off the table, or I might uh, play slow and, and make him wait. I don't know, you know. To play Peter Ebden in the first round here at Benson Hedges is a tough match for me, um, but they're all tough, so just get on with the game. And um, I don't know, if we have a blast, we'll see what happens. If, if, we have a, if we have a safety one, he makes me slow down. I know about that one as well, so. Good evening. Two of Snooker's biggest draws very much up for it tonight here at the Wembley Conference Centre. Peter Ebden, who shot to fame during the 1992 World Championship by beating Steve Davis, his opponent here tonight. Davis has won all four of their meetings since then. A fascinating occasion in prospect, and I can assure you that the match certainly lives up to it. Here's how we stand on day three of the Masters. Stephen Hendry will meet Steve James in the quarterfinals. James winning a gripping match with Terry Griffiths this afternoon by five frames to four. James Watanai will face the winner of our match tonight. And then tomorrow evening, Jimmy White and Ken Doherty will be packing them in with the survivor to face Alan McManus. And tomorrow afternoon, it's the old pals act, Willie Thorne against Dennis Taylor, with Neil Folds awaiting the winner of that one. So let's get straight into our big match tonight then. Steve Davis against Peter Ebden. It's over nine frames, of course. And frame one, you'll see that they've already been playing for 40 minutes. The score as we join it is Davis 40, Ebden 4, and it's been that way for over 13 minutes. Our commentators are Ray Edmonds and John Virgo. Well, Steve Davis tried to resolve it then. Of course, he's got the 36-point lead. It's not in his favour for the frame to be abandoned as a stalemate. What's John Street thinking, I wonder? He might have thought he was in for a long night, but not this long. Well, I think Peter there lost his patience and tried <coughs> a rather spectacular shot. He'd played to pot it in the corner, but, well, can Steve get out onto uh, the pink? There won't be a deal of advantage unless he can. One. And I think he can get through to the edge on the pink. Deadlock finally broken, but Peter is still only 43 points behind. There's still 59 on the table, so still not over. Seven, Steve Davis.
one. Well, that double should put an end to this first frame, which at the moment has just reached the 45 minute marker. Six. Well, I say that. It's all gone wrong. 49 ahead, still 51 left. Although, where the black is, tied up against the yellow, it's got to be odds on Steve Davis. Touching ball. Well, that's a little bit careless from Steve. Peter can now aim directly away. And if he can find a spot behind the yellow and black, it's a bit of a gamble, but it would be a very positive shot and it would leave Steve with something of a problem. Well, he played to bring the black into play off the blue, but I think he might have just left this red. This is all that Steve needs. Well, I'm sure he played to pot the red closest to the pocket. So he's left his opponent half a chance. 59 points in it. Sorry, 49 points in it, 51 left on the table. So you can afford a pink. One. Well, he's got to go for the black now. This isn't easy. Great shot with the rest. Eight. And he's given himself half a chance at this red. Yes, he's just going to be slightly hampered by the blue. That will make this red a little bit more difficult. Nine. Well, that was a tremendous pot. And control. Just a little bit low on the black. Yes, the dilemma now is does he attempt to take the cue ball all the way around the table for this final red? That might give him good position, but uh, chancy. Well, no harm done there, John. I think it was probably 16. worth a chance. Yes, absolutely. Obviously, the second cushion he needed to hit was the bolt cushion, so I didn't get enough side on it. But a chance to play a good safety. 16, Peter Ebden. He's right back in the frame. <laughs> Sits down, 33 points behind, still 35 left, and Steve Davis snookered. As we approach the 50th minute.
Ow. Four. Interrupted. So now, anxious looks from Steve Davis. He looked to have this frame completely in his pocket a few moments ago. Just needs to get good position on a colour. Any colour will do, but I would think he'd be coming down for pink or green. One. The problem ball will appear to be the brown. Well, easy along the cushions, and we'll be helped by the fact that the blues near the brown, perfect on the pink. Well, he didn't play that too well. He needed to be straighter Seven. on this yellow. That way he could have guaranteed a nice angle on the green, which he's going to require. Straight on the yellow, could have just rolled through and it would have been a formality, green to brown. So a little bit careless. Nine. When we talk about the psychology of snooker, if Peter Ebden could clear up at this visit and win this frame, he's taken everything that Steve Davis could throw at him. What a morale booster this could be. Twelve. Yes, he knows that this brown is... Pretty crucial. Just about enough angle to come out nicely for the blue. But certainly not a gimme down the cushion. Sixteen. Good pot. Hasn't really got good position on the blue. He can pot it. He'll have in his mind he's got to be careful of an in off in one of the centre pockets. demonstration there and perhaps forgivable a wonderful shot on the pink and uh, that psychological boost John was shown what it will be if he knocks the black in here 54 minutes virtually on the first frame Peter Ebden stands up to everything Steve Davis throws at him and takes the first frame Well, what an opening frame. 54 minutes, longest of the tournament so far, and Ebden takes it. On into frame two, then. Ebden's just had a 32 break, but Mr. Black, Steve Davis, sizing up a plant. Well, if the black goes, I think Peter has been a trifle fortunate because I don't think he played for it. But 
buy it could pay dividends. Pretty obvious ever since Peter Ebden burst onto the snooker scene and beat Steve Davis comfortably in the first round of the World Championship that he was going to be something to be reckoned with in the snooker world. Had a couple of defeats by Steve since then. But he's a much more determined player now, John, since he won the Grand Prix. Started to mature. Yeah, when he beat Steve, of course, it was his first season. Second season, I thought, he maybe took the game a bit lightly. Everything seems to be happening Nine. very quickly, and I think it just took him a little bit by surprise. Wasn't too good last season, but this season, as you're saying, started off, well, couldn't have started off better by winning the Grand Prix. And a lot of confidence. I think he's... His game's built around his confidence, and he's been playing well recently. And on well, the first frame, that's bound to give anybody confidence. Eleven. He's looking good at the moment. Fifty-one points the lead. He's looking for a couple of 19. reds, a couple of blacks. Could clinch the frame at this visit. Steve Davis yet to score in this frame. Twenty. Twenty-seven. This red colour, one more red, and that should do it. Obviously the red goes 35. to the right corner, the one just to the left of the little cluster of five. Thirty-six. And what a contrast to the first frame. Tremendous bout of safety. Five minutes under the hour to complete it. This one. Just under 12 minutes so far. And, uh, almost certainly gone Peter Ebden's 42. way. Forty-three. 
Just seeing as to where the black will go, whether it would spot or not. But it's a pretty good performance, this, from this young man, after that first frame, to come out firing on all cylinders. 57. He was obviously hyped up a bit at the way he won the first. Yes, Ray, I think that's a, v a f fair point. Uh, we was having the discussion after the Grand Prix about Peter showing his emotions on the table, but that was th that frame, the first frame, and this one, he's been cool, calculated, and playing some superb snooker. 65. So it's just big moments that he shows his emotions, and I don't suppose there's anything wrong with that. I do it most other sports. Remember when Seve Ballesteros knocked that putt in to win the Open at the 17th at St Andrews. Similar type of things. And I think the audience can appreciate when someone's, well, pull one out of the bag as he did in the first frame. And this one has been perfect snooker. 73. Seventy-five. There are the covers now. For exactly one hundred. And what a start. Seventy-eight. Eighty-two. Must be feeling a bit shell-shocked, but he's been through all this before. Still seven frames to go. 87. Century and uh, that was a cracking shot. Good. So he's looking very strong. 93. Hesitated before he took the black, but nevertheless, a very convincing second frame, and it's 2 0 to Peter Ebden. Yes, what a start indeed by Peter Ebden. Steve Davis with a lot to think about in frame three. Davis again in trouble. He's trailing 46-0. Nine. 
16. Seventeen. Twenty four. Twenty five. Cubo, yeah. Thirty one. Thirty eight. Thirty nine. Nicely on the black to get on this last red. This black will make the scores level. Then a tough red along the top cushion to follow. He, well, has he run through quite as far as he would have liked? 46. He's a missable. Nearer the yellow. Powerful shot required now. Just having to hit it that little bit 54, harder. Steve Davis. To get the field ball back for the green. Still expected him to get it, but as it is. Kimmel, sorry, yes. <coughs> I'm sure that Peter can get through to the yellow, to the corner. What a chance. Yes, he can get through. Just having the cue ball clean, so nothing untoward can happen. Comes to the table, eight points behind. He's yellow, green, brown, blue, and pink. Two. It, three behind, so three balls wanted. Come a little bit straight on the brown. May have to just stun it in and play for the blue into the right centre. But if he does play that, it's important he gets the right angle on the blue to run through for the pink. Nine. Looks pretty good. Great effort from Steve. Just didn't get a good positional shot on the yellow, and it could have cost him. Four. 
14. Came too straight on the blue, so couldn't get as close to the pink as he would have liked. Pink for the third frame. would have to say 14, that uh, Peter Ebden Peter was aware there that thank you that pink quiet please thank you. three nil lead and he certainly just twitched at it quite naturally all players do so and he's left Steve half a chance but to get to the black requires some shot Great effort. Six. But as you said, Ray, it was going to take some shot to get position on the black. He's not on it. There you see it. 60 points each. What a big frame now, particularly for Steve Davis. No, is Six. he too hard? He played it to Steve finish Davis. on the side cushion. So, this is a chance. Peter having the black cleaned. Can't imagine a, a kick liable to affect where the black will go, but perhaps wise to take every precaution. It all depends on these shots. It looks pretty straight. Striking down. Yeah! Yes, the crowd liked it. There are fine yeah. margins between winning and losing at this level, but it's Peter Ebden who increases his lead. 3 0. <laughs> And Peter Ebden only too aware just how important that win was in such a tight third frame. On into frame four then and Steve Davis in real trouble in a championship he's once won only twice in 14 attempts. And finally Peter having a go at the double. Always dodgy, you never know quite where the red might go off the knuckle of the pocket. One. Well, that was a poor shot from Steve. Yeah. Well, a chance of winning the frame at this visit. Not now, I don't think. 20 points in front. One, Steve Davis. Four, Steve Davis. Well, that was a little bit careless. Maybe trying to be a little bit too ambitious with that get out of the snooker. One. But once again, Steve has not played the best positional shot in the world. Well, maybe he did get a bad contact this time. But... Certainly hampered for the blue. I don't think that's an option now. May just be able to get the cue past the yellow for the brown. Just about without striking down. Ooh, that wiped its feet. 
Five. <clears throat> Six. tend to think in snooker 13. that some frames are more important than others. Perhaps all frames are important, but in a best of nine 14. match, certainly 4-0 and 3-1. These have tremendous importance. 21. Steve just needing this red. Leave Peter wanting snookers and uh, he'll be pretty relieved. Had a tottering time since the end of the first frame. No, no, you've got to end your own. 37, 22 break. That little conversation now was the scoreboard they use at the Wembley Arena is not the normal one. It doesn't show the break and the points being added to your main score. So what you do when you look at the scoreboard, like now, Steve has got to add his 22 points he's scored onto that 37. And it's a little bit confusing. As that's the only time we use this scoreboard when we come here to Wembley. Just clarified it. He's safe now. And... Another red and a black to come. 25. So I don't think that Peter Ebden will be getting out of his chair, except to go for a cup of tea at the interval. <laughs> 32. Certainly, Steve winning this frame sets up an intriguing battle. For the second half 33. of this match. And the quality and excitement of the play has got some enthusiasm in the crowd. 38. The most enjoyable. All the best aspects of snooker. Session cup of tea, a thoroughly enjoyable session. Three frames to one to Peter Ebden. And Steve Davis clearly delighted to have finally put a frame on the board. I'll just pause at this moment to have a look at the head to head statistics between these two players. It's very much in Steve Davis's favour, as you can see. Uh, Peter Ebden coming to prominence, as we mentioned, with that stunning win in the World Championship in 92. They met three further times that year. They all went very comfortably to Davis. And then in the, the rematch at the World Championship last April, Davis took ample revenge with a 10 3 victory. But tonight, and the one that matters here at Wembley, Steve Davis in real trouble. 3 1 down. Let's pick it up again in frame five. Remember that Ebden needs just two more for victory. And in the commentary box for this final session, Clive Everton and Dennis Taylor. <coughs>
one. Davis's break off shot wasn't near enough. The ball cushion. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty five. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Well, Clive, as you mentioned there, that uh, break-off shot from Steve Davis is proving to be costly. Peter Ebden off to a terrific start, and uh, it should be a big frame for him. To go into a 4-1 lead would certainly uh, leave Steve Davis with a quite a mountain to climb. He's climbed a few, but uh, it would make it difficult. Just one more loose red. This time, uh, Peter will be heading down for the blue to leave a nice angle to then dislodge a few. Forty-one. Decided to try to retain black ball position. I would have thought it easier to have opened the bunch from the blue rather than the black. They certainly made a terrific job of that. It wasn't an easy shot, that. Power shot with lots of side. Certainly can't take it away from this young man. Forty-nine. Yes, Dennis. He's got great bottle. A big arena, a big match, a lively crowd. It's just what brings the best out of him. Fifty-four.
55. That red chosen in preference to the one at the back of the bunch because it, he could thereby bring another red into a possible position. Sixty-two. I think he's just under hit that slightly to be able to stay on the black, so uh, up for the blue. Sixty-three. Well, he's got the cue ball on a string at the moment. That's the perfect position there. He likes a little sip of his water, Clive. Uh, reminds me of uh, an early Steve Davis, then. Yes, I think it's a way of uh, composing himself. Just this blue and uh, one more red. I believe Davis needing a snooker. Sixty-eight. Eighty-four. Somewhat unlucky not to open the bunch more than that. Not reached. Eighty-four. <laughs> but eighty-four is more than enough to guarantee Ebden a four-one lead. But back came Steve Davis to take the next frame, 88-28, to keep himself alive. But of course he has to win the seventh as well to stay in the match. Davis at the table, leading 14-0. That's a bad shot from Steve Davis Four. there. <clears throat> he had a number of choices of position, but he didn't want the cannon into the red. He still got the pot on, but uh, makes the position a little bit more difficult. Five. Good recovery. Going into the reds, he wasn't quite sure exactly where the cue ball was going to finish. Davis. Well, that was uh, another bad shot. Not only did he miss the pot, but he didn't get the position on the uh, pink. Now, whether it was a bad contact or not, Peter Ebden's having the cue ball clean, but uh, didn't sound like a kick. No, I didn't hear anything either.
again. Well, one. That certainly was. I heard that. <laughs> it's amazing. He had the ball cleaned uh, beforehand, Clive, and uh, well, it's still a big question, uh, Mark, as to what causes kicks. We've had all sorts of theories, little bits of chalk on the cue ball and static, but uh, no one's come up with the uh, with the right answer. Nine. He's made a complete mess of that. Didn't have a great margin of error. He was playing for pink, of course. It's possibly uh, a little bit of tension creeping in, Clive. He only needs Nine. the one frame. Peter Ebden. Kept his concentration well after his disappointing shot, though. He played an excellent safety. This escape could easily go wrong. I'm not sure if he's looking at uh, just missing the green there. And he's not playing for the red in the middle of the table. I think he's coming off a few cushions here. Bow four. Peter well, he wasn't too far away, but uh, it looks as if he's left another great chance for Peter Ebden. One. This was the first or second frame. I feel sure Peter Ebden Seven. would clinch the frame. It's a match-winning chance for him, which makes it a lot more difficult. But they're all there for the taking. Eight. He can clinch the match with reds and colours. He won't need yellow or green. Fifteen.
21. Had to take care with that. He left sufficient distance between cue ball and pink for the pot not to be a certainty. Twenty-two. Played that nicely to improve the position of other reds. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. <clears throat> Having the cue ball cleaned again, but it looks as if he's got a slight angle on the black, so no problem to come off the top cushion and nicely onto a red. And this will be a special win for Peter Ebden, should he pull it off. A lot of people thought this man was going to 36. be favourite and take this Benson Hedges trophy after winning last week in Wales. But he's looking as if he's going out. Thirty-seven. Forty-four. Only this red needed to leave Davis needing a snooker. Forty-five. Nebden has taken this match clinching chance with great composure. Fifty-one. No sign of Clincher's disease from him. 52. 59. Fifty-nine, Peter Ebden. So, Peter Ebden, having beaten Steve Davis the season before last in one of Snooker's great arenas, the Crucible, has now beaten him in another at the Wembley Conference Centre. Ebden wins by five frames to two. Yes, Peter Ebden, a wild card entry, remember, now through to meet James Watana, and as a reward, as odds against uh, winning, reduced from 20 to 1 to 8 to 1, joint third favourite.